Dr. Do Ajaho said he had received a number of petitions relating to the genetically modified organisms and the plant breeders bill and referred the matter to the leadership of the house to consider and advise him accordingly. Indeed, the objective of the act provided in session 2 as follows A to ensure an adequate level of protection in the field of safe development transfer handling and use of genetically modified organisms resulting from biotechnology that may have an adverse effect on health and environment i will therefore call on leadership to take note of the biosafety act vis-a-vis -vis the plan builders act and all the petitions that have been submitted to this house so that we can arrive at a certain consensus and map the way forward. The Plant Breeders Bill currently at the consideration stage in Parliament is one of the items to be looked at at this session of Parliament. There is definitely, uh, I guess, a lot of stuff brewing when it comes to GMO. So in, at a time where, I mean, there's bans in countries like Australia, New Zealand, Germany, France and Ireland, why, I think the big debate most people think is why is Ghana trying to put a law in place where we're going to have GM foods. We have two people who are going to help Benny and I discuss. First and foremost, we have Ernesto, who is a key advocate against GMO. Um, he joins us. And also we have Dr. Owusu Efriakoto, who is um, MP of Kwada, so and also a minority spokesperson on food, agriculture, and cocoa. So good morning to you both gentlemen. Good morning. Laura. Okay, so um, the question... Some country, you know, a lot of countries are banning it, certainly in the West. Other countries like China, um, Canada, Argentina, even the USA are rethinking their stance on it. Why then, as while other people are running away, we're going forward? So, and so, but before even that, I want to actually just go into Parliament. What, what's happening in Parliament in regards to that, Doctor? Uh, the, the Plant Breeders Bill mm. was introduced in March. 2013 was referred to, went through the processes, and is now at a consideration stage in Parliament, as I speak to you. So this is where we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at least based on 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 what's happening, as as a someone taking a stance against it, do you think it's even a bill that should even been brought in the first place, Minister? Well, thank you very much once again, uh, Amma. I think the fundamental point that needs to be made here is that um, our members of parliament have not done Ghana real good when it comes to the subject matter of genetically modified foods. Because you take, for instance, the fact that uh, they secretly passed the Biosafety Act in 2011, which actually allows for the production and the testing of genetically modified foods in our country. Um, you, you, you would understand the, some of I mean, the implications. It looks like they only say, yeah, yeah, in Parliament. If you look at some of the contracts that has been signed, some of the arrangements we have with multinational corporations and all that, to the extent that some companies even could repatriate 100% of their profit, and you have former, how do you call it, minority leaders coming out to say that they didn't even know about it when they were in Parliament. It's sad for, I mean, people like us. Now, the Plants Breeders Bill has an aspect about how do you call it genetically modified foods that we are fighting. But the most important aspect of the Plant Breeders Bill is the legislative framework it's about to put in place to ensure that our national sovereignty, for instance, is wiped out, where members of parliament would lose their right to, as it were, to uh, amend any section of the Plant Breeders Bill, amend or, 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 or more or less revoke or repeal any, 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 any time they think that uh, this law isn't good for us. So this is actually the time for us to revisit the uh, Biosafety Act and fight it out, ensure that at least at the end of the day, the interests of the people, I mean, are taken on board. Doc, can I ask you this? I mean, why, why was it you would think that people like um, Ernesto and uh, people who are against GMOs are saying that this, what, well, the Biosafety Act, first off, was passed secretly? <laughs> but uh, that's the point I was coming to. It's unfortunate that uh, this young man will sit here on national television and say that Parliament's work is secretive. 
he may not probably know how parliament works. There's no secrecy about parliament. And I want to put it on record here. There's no secrecy about parliament. Parliament conducts its affairs in accordance with the 1992 constitution. And the processes are there. All bills which are brought from the executive to parliament are published and are very well known to members. And it goes to the, to the country. And it goes through a procedure. And part of the procedure is what we are going through. Secondly, there seems to be, he seems to be very confused about the, the Plant Breeders Bill and the Biosafety Act. The Biosafety Act was passed in 19 and 2010. And 2011, and went through the same processes that the Plant Breeders Bill is going through. So he cannot come and sit on national television and say that that act was passed secretly. I think it's not the right thing to say. Now, secondly, okay. the procedure that we are going through, you asked me a simple question what is the status of the bill? And I'm saying that it's at a consideration stage. Okay. He has to educate himself about procedures of parliament to be able to come and sit here and say that there is some secrecy about the work of parliament. There's nothing secret about the work of parliament. So, and thirdly, there's nothing in this bill which talks about GMO. The plant breeders bill, and I have it, I have it in my hands here, mm -hmm. and I'll read the first uh, paragraph of the memorandum, uh, if you, you allow me. And it says, quote, the purpose of this bill is to establish a legal framework to protect the rights of breeders of new varieties of plants or plant groupings and to promote the breeding of new varieties of plants aimed at improving the quantity, quality, cost of food, fuel, fiber, and raw materials for industry. The bill seeks to acknowledge the achievements of breeders of new varieties by making available to them an exclusive right on the basis of a set of uniform, clearly defined principles. So please, no, please, no, please, 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 no, 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 please. This document has no reference to GMO. It is rather the Biosafety Act, which also came as a bill like this one has come, which has provisions for GMO. So this confusion, I don't know where this confusion is coming from about the fact that this this bad bill. Okay, Dr. Akoto, so, um, 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 no, no, let me, he, let me jump he, in there. Let me jump said, in there. He said, he said some, some, I, I wanna, uh, I'll, I'll allow you in a minute. Um, in terms of just what you brought up, you said it was passed secretly, and he's saying it wasn't passed secretly. Let's just sort of move on from that. So if this plum breeders bill has nothing to do with GMO, why then, you know, the demonstrations? And that's when I'll come to you. Uh, no. Before that, he he's, he's, he's made some quite unfortunate statements about my person. I do not think that we're invited here on the basis of our age. And that's the problem we have, we have in this country, where people think that because they are old, uh, it, it simply means that whatever they say is true and they do not need to be challenged. That element of... of, 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 of uh, 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 Intolerance is, is, is something that the whole country must rise up against. Now, he talks about ignorance, he talks about confusion. I do not think that any of us here are confused in our minds to come and sit here. We are actually convinced that is why we are, sit we are seated here. Now, take um, the uh, Plant Breeders Bill, Clause 6, uh, Section C, and I read it to you. It says, an essentially derived variety may be obtained, for example, by the selection of a C, variant individual from a plant of the initial variety, back crossing or transformation by genetic engineering. I would plead with you that you call any scientist worth his or her sort to tell us what genetic engineering means. So, you see, it's, 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 it, it's sad when our leaders go out there in full defense. We are not doing this because we hate them. We are doing this because we love our country. We are doing this because we love the people. We are doing this because we cherish nature. So, this, this whole termigant uh, attitude that has, 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 has been adopted by our members of parliament is very, very unfortunate. 
Very, very unfortunate. Look, you have close to 100, in fact, more than 166 countries across the world that has banned genetically modified foods. The American Academy for Environmental Medicine are out with their research, and they have said that they tested genetically modified potato on 100 rats, all of them died. Some suffered intestinal damage, others suffered blood clotting, and for some it was system failure. System failure, I mean, what makes me uh, reflect, maybe there's an ant or there's a fly, I'm able to do this and all that. Now, you have a situation where that, 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 that particular function is damaged so that you have ants entering your nose and you can't do anything about it. You put your, we're, we're to, you're talking about extreme circumstances, mm -hmm. and those are not the basis of what this particular argument. No, but these uh, are research. Let me for one second. Now, what I want to ask right now is to the both of you. Um, firstly, to you, Doc, because obviously you, being a, a minority speaker as well, if uh, Honorable Do Ajaho has found it fit to actually put in or stop on the basis that there have been several petitions, then obviously there has to be some concern. There has to be some underlying concern about this particular bill being passed. What would you think those concerns are coming from your particular point? Well, he let it be known when we reconvened on Tuesday that uh, petitions, some petitions have been received. Personally, I haven't seen the petitions. I've seen people on the streets with banners uh, demonstrating. Okay. The, he's referring these petitions to the leadership of parliament and this is normal procedure you know this is the the way we operate every bill which comes is published in the newspapers to say we are receiving comments so it is normal it's not abnormal at all to have uh, the public actually come in with petitions it goes from appointment of ministers to the most technical of, of, of matters so it is part of it so when the petition comes we are the consideration stage all the petitions will be put together to see the the common elements in it and to look at how they affect different clauses of the bill as we go along and and and, and incorporate these in the final version so we are at the consideration stage. There's no, it is, uh, in other words, we are at the working stage where all kinds of views can be incorporated in this. The, 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 the bill comes as a draft. Excuse me, let me, let me explain because I think there's a, a lot of confusion about the, the way parliament works. The bill is a draft of a document of a law, potential law, which the executive sent to us as the representatives of the people. It is up to us to get the views of the general public about these matters and incorporate as far as we can into uh, the, the bill so that finally when it becomes law, it is a reflection of the views of, uh, of the people. Okay, I'm going to ask you your view then yeah. on this particular thing then because at the point where they mention sovereignty being lost mm -hmm. in certain things, do you think that's something that we should even consider as a nation? Yeah, but you see, the, the point is that the principal reason for the bill is to protect the intellectual property rights of scientists and breeders. As I read to you. Fantastic. So, so excuse me. No, 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 please. No. The, 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 I don't think. Nice. No, no, no. The thing is that. No, 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 please. We shouldn't deviate from the purpose of the bill. The main, the essence of the bill is to protect the, the, the intellectual property rights of people who spend their whole lives developing varieties. So I'll give you an example. You no, no, no. We're going to lose some. For, for the benefit. Is that the no, no, cost? no. The, is the, the intellectual, is no, no. In someone's intellectual what, property. What? Uh, you're saying we need to someone protect someone's intellectual, you know, engineering. No, not someone. I'm so clear. Scientists, scientists in Ghana. No, please. Ghana, yes, yes, the yes, case yes. Is, let me. The scientists in Ghana yes. need to protect them. Fine. Yes. Now. With that particular scientist mm -hmm. weighed up against the whole country losing the sovereignty of that particular thing. Is that, no, is but that something not true that, about sovereignty? But that's no, no, no. In the but it, no, no but you, you, he was talking about Clause 6, but when I was reading Clause 6, Clause 6 is talking about something else. He says uniformity. Clause 6 is, I'm holding the bill in my hand. Clause 6 a variety is 
uniform if subject to vary it's actually okay. defining what uniformity is all right can so, i ask so you i'm um, reading i'm reading no, no, i don't want to okay we're going to dwell on too many things all right let me ask you something i didn't say six no no i know what i'm talking about 26 c please thank you um i want to sort of put it to both of you it it when as you referred to 20 says um genetic engineering so is there any way that we can be assured as Ghanaians? because a lot of people really don't understand a lot of times it's big words we're talking about the average Ghanaian. so can we be assured can, can, can we be assured that genetic modification of plants so forth and will not affect Ghanaian safety down the road i'll start with you first and then doc i'll let you so is gen genetic engineering would, can we be assured that 10 years to 20 years on line will affect our health and that is exactly the reason why we are protesting vehemently and calling for massive protestations across the length and breadth of the country without fail now if the speaker hadn't come to that admission that look this whole thing lacks a certain consultation he wouldn't even have mentioned the biosafety act which was passed in 2011 to say that let us review that one also now the ministry of health the whole ministry of health of ghana issued a statement that said that they are not for genetically modified foods and they were not consulted this whole thing lacks consultation now talk about the governing committee the legal and parliamentary affairs committee now look at the kind of uh, 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 documents that they referred to in uh, or, or what inf informed their work we are talking of the 1992 constitution the standing orders of parliament the plant and fertilizer act 2010 uh, act 803 uh, the international conventions for the protection of new varieties of there was not a single reference to any health document so our health concerns were not even taken into consideration just a few days ago the gipc was out to say that genetically modified foods and its production in this country would affect our, our, our exports would affect our trade with other countries the whole of eu have banned genetically modified foods now what do you expect if we take our produce to them I would suggest a business, how do you call it, proposal, that whilst, let's say, the rest of them would want to go into genetically modified, I mean, foods or production or whatever, we can specialize as a country to say that we are into the organic production of food. Ghana is organic. We can brand ourselves in that way. What about that? Okay, Doctor, um, Dr. Akosha, can you please, you know, I mean, whether it's put people's mind at ease, is there any way that with any sort of genetic engineering of crops um, that Ghanaians, their, their health, safety, well, health and safety issues or fears can be addressed and put down, you know? <laughs> but you see, the, the whole thing. Can, can, we, can they be assured? This is, why, this is why I wanted a bit more time to explain. See, I'm here as a member of parliament. And it's because of the work of Parliament, because of this bill that I'm here. And I'm saying to you, this bill is about the intellectual property rights of Ghanaian scientists. See, Ghanaian scientists have done wonderful work in the past. They continue to do wonderful work. And will continue to do wonderful work in the future. Because we have the culture of science and so on. Okay. Let me give you a very simple example. There's a variety of maize called Obatampa. Mm -hmm. It was developed over a 12-year period by Ghanaian scientists in Accra and Kumasi at the Crop Research Institute at the University of Science Technology at Legon. And now it's all over West Africa and the different local names. Those who invented that variety have not benefited one bit from it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's intellectual property. It's like writing a book the intellectual property belongs to you. If you die, it goes to your, uh, your nest of king and, and, and it becomes your property. We don't have that facility in Ghana. So the essence of this bill is to create an, a, a law to protect so the rights. Would you so say there's a confusion? Yeah, please, please. People are just but confused. But what I was saying, that mm -hmm. there's confusion. That's the point I was making right from the beginning in my opening statement. I said that there's confusion. Okay? So I am here with the work of parliament. And I'm holding in, in my hand this document. And all what we are doing is to create the laws to protect certain sections, very important sections of our society, and their work for the future, so that it encourages others to come in and also benefit. In fact, Ghana should be benefiting from Obatampa as a country. Mm -hmm. 
because if things were properly done once it goes to togo and it goes to nigeria it's all over under different names then we sit there and say that we are going to charge you so much for user and that's what happens in, in, everywhere in the world so that is the the void that we are trying to fill this whole okay. thing about gmo if you put too much emphasis on it it means that you are deflecting from the essence of this bill it is it's rather the the other bill the the act the, the act. biosafety act that we should be talking about but not this document please so the point that i'm making that your readers should be very much aware is that the process that this bill is going through these petitions and so on we receive them all the time from the public and we re i'm sure if you go to the records you when the biosafety bill came to parliament we received uh, uh, petitions and it's up to the speaker to say because everybody sent a petition to parliament will have to address the speaker so it's up to him to come to parliament and say i've received these uh, petitions i'm referring them to this committee for consideration so what the speaker did uh, on, on tuesday was nothing out of the ordinary it's the normal thing that we do all the time okay you're shaking your head it is not normal i mean i have never had in my short life when a speaker of parliament was forced to make a statement no, of that of, I mean, he, he, he not forced. Please. He made, he made, he was compelled no, one no, way or the other because of the public pressure. <laughs> Have you ever heard the speaker make any statement yes. concerning genetically modified foods in no, this no, country? No, no, no. Uh, let's let's, let's now, not now, deflect. Now, 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 now honorable, 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 honorable makes, makes the point that we should not even be talking about the plant breeders bill. We no, should no, be no. talking That's about it. Now, I, mean, I was invited to no. talk about the plant breeders bill. Good, please. Good. No, don't say that you should talk about plus it. 23. Plus 23. And I would want to ask Honorable, I mean the whole nation is watching whether Honorable is not worried by this particular clause for instance. Clause 23. It says, a plant breeder right shall be independent of any measure taken by the Republic to regulate within Ghana the production, certification, and marketing of material or variety or the importation or exportation of the material a plant breeder shall be independent of any measure so it means fda cannot intervene like the way they did with how do you call it um, uh, uh, tobinko uh, the president cannot intervene yoko cannot say anything you see and the implication of of of, of the passage of this 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 particular uh, uh, bail into law. No, if, it's, not, if, it's not yet a, 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 an act. Please, bail, we are in the process. That's, that's what I'm saying. Is a bail, bail into law. Listen to me carefully, sir. Now, you listen to some of the lawyers and the kind of uh, arguments that they have laid concerning this. But it says that we may have the right to pass a law, but we will lose any right to repeal or even amend it later on. The bill once passed can never be revoked according to WTO rules, even if a least developed country, that's LDC, introduces a TRIPS compliance obligation or IP protection, it would no longer be able to reduce that scope of protection, regardless of the fact that the LDC is not required to implement the trade-related aspects of the intellectual property rights. So I am actually here in protection of our Member of Parliament that you are about to sign your own rights away. You are about to sign your own death warrant once you pass this bill into law. Death warrant. I mean, Unfortunately, I mean, you, you have no right has, has to return death to death to, death to, death to, death to, um, to death you, asked, you asked Doc a question. How does he feel of that particular clause? Doc, can you respond to that? There, there are 61... No, he said that... No, 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 that please. That no, 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 please. There are 61 clauses in this bill. I'm here not because of a particular uh, clause. I'm here because of the this whole, bill. The whole there are 61 clauses of this bill. And in any stage... That is the essence of the consideration uh, uh, process, okay? It is not a final document. It's only a draft. So why does anybody think that is gospel, that this is going to be law? That's not, a, that's not the way we operate in Parliament. So the concerns of uh, the, the general public, as I said, I haven't seen the petition. But I'm sure that the petition may, may include what this I'll give you a copy of the petition. Okay? So, it's not a question of we're talking about petitions so there are many other uh, concerns that have been raised which we looked we look at and incorporate in the course of the of the consideration stage of the bill 
Okay, can I just sort of put something in the framework there? Um, by protecting Ghanaian scientists, yes. um, which we know is a good thing, and you know, you, you cited that maze example. Yeah. Um, and again, so many people have concerns about GMO. Even it seems a lot of people didn't even know about the, the previous 2011 um, at all. It, the, the, the amount of noise they created then is probably not as much In now. Fact, well, we the, the deputy ranking finish, member finish, of Agri did not even know the biosafety act is law. He's a new member of parliament. All, so all, um, with, with all that in mind, and with people's people having so much, I guess, concerns about health, and I feel like if you know the plant breeders will protect and scientists, and and it, it does lay out that okay, genetic uh, genetic modified or engineering, it scares people. Um, in terms of just from, from this is your, I want to know your personal opinion. Do you know is there a way where scientists can still be protected, but without it affecting the food we eat, so that you know where the, unless the health implications or health hazards can be put to rest. So but, can we can but, we kill two? Yeah, you know, I find this whole discussion very hypocritical. You know why? Why? Ghana imports 150,000 metric tons of poultry products into this country mm -hmm. every year. And, and that's most, legal? Well, excuse me. It's legal? No, no, no. And most of that is coming from America, Brazil, and Europe. Europe. Okay? Where do you think those chickens are fed from? They are fed from genetically modified uh, grains. Ha. Uh -huh. Can I finish? So we are eating genetically modified food. Already. Of course. Already. So 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 has anybody died or had you know whether there is uh, any intensity of uh, these cancers and all these weird diseases that they are talking about in Ghana and other West Africa other places or even in America itself. Because they, they eat that the same poultry. Parts of it we are brought to us here in as important. Brazil, we go there and it's hundred percent grains that they feed to these poultry, uh, uh, these chickens, were and then slaughtered and then we import them here. 150,000 metric tons a year. So what are we talking about? So, but then you made a good point because we used to have a great, you know, poultry industry and now it we're, collapsed. We're, it collapsed. Yes. So then have we done anything in Ghana? Has, has members of parliament done anything no, to no, revive no. it? Because no, no, no. we're talking the, about being is, proud that we're me. bringing in chickens and poultry great, from other excuse countries. Me, excuse me, I'm not saying we're proud. No, no, I'm not saying we're proud. But you're saying it's hypocritical, no, 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 but yet we shouldn't be so happy that we're eating from others. I'm saying that it's, you know, the point I'm making, please don't miss. I totally understand your point, but it's taking it to a different level. Exactly. I'm giving you an example of how this whole thing works that genetically modified food is eaten in America and Ghana everywhere through feeding grains to chickens and other uh, po another po and we are eating it are we all dead all the Americans will be dead by now they, GMO has been in America for 30 28 years now you know now the economics of it is making it unpopular because people are now going for organic food around the world and so on so there's a premium on organic food and all that so okay. it's making the demand Dr. for Alco, so can i ask you something you made a good point that a lot of Ghanaians are eating oh, yes. um gmo chickens <laughs> and a lot of stuff but do you, do you think that every Ghanaian is even aware that when we go to a restaurant the chicken we're eating is but I'm if they're not aware i'm telling them so then, okay, if you're saying maybe we're being hypocritical, so have we been hypocritical? If I'm sure a lot of people don't know that when they go to their chop bar and they're eating their meat, it's from another country and there's GM product oh, that yeah. they may not understand. You don't, you don't know this. I'm talking about, 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 about international trading Ghana. No, I'm talking about the average Ghanaian. Wow. I'm not talking about you know people who are educated and wear nice suits. Maybe the average Ghanaian who may not be as educated. Do you think they're aware? Well, 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 so well, now, no, no. But why, why do you ask me this question? Why are you asking me? You brought it up. Oh, no, because you know I brought it as an illustration. Oh, okay. But can I say the thing is, okay. when, I come, the thing I think, is I think when it comes to hypocrisy, in. there's a general issue because we've mentioned uh, various nations that have uh, banned the, uh, how would I say, the. Um, manufacturing of GMOs or actually breeding of GMOs within their own lands. However, they allow importations of certain GMOs products. Now, the issue that we have with this is that these are countries or situations or places where they have clear labeling 
whereby if you buy a product, you go into a supermarket, whatever the case is, it will tell you a distinguishing whether this is organic, whether this is GMO. People have the no, opportunity. No, no. Yeah. I'll tell you what no, 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 no. <laughs> Doug, let me finish, please. And then it gets to a point where you, know, you, you can make an informed decision. When we are going to be starting to bring this in, will we have a situation whereby we can clearly identify the difference between an organic product and a genetically modified product? And will Ghanaians have the choice at that point to choose clearly and informed? Well, you have to be asking the Food and Drugs Board because they are the authority for these questions. Not for me, remember. But then according to the clause, they don't have any sort They don't have any. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying that this clause is not written in gold. This is only a draft of a bill. So the concerns, if you have a petition to the um, to the Speaker of our Parliament, will be looked at. I don't see the fuss. No. I don't see the fuss at all. Quickly. I am not too sure a Ghanaian wrote the plant breeders bill. Who wrote the plant breeders bill? Which the Ghanaian which Ghanaian would write would so the so, executive so, so the executive was I'm telling you so the executive so, so the executive the government wrote, the so the executive so wrote Why are you bringing that, that up, though? they themselves do not have that power to as it were because it makes the plant breeder very, very sacrosanct. It can't be touched, we vote our rights away and all those kind of things. But quickly to the point, I think Ghanaians should be sad today. You have a whole member of parliament who is very much aware that we are consuming something which is being protested widely, I mean, at length and breadth across the whole world. No, but that's and not yet, true. But yet, that's not true. yet he comes to sit here and confirms to the people of Ghana that you have been eating genetically modified foods all these while. Yes, what I'm saying is that the fallacy, there's, there's, there's a I mean, and, 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 and he's yes. blaming us that we are hypocritical. When he was supposed, I mean, you knew. You could have, I mean, gone for a certain legislation of a sort that, look, let's protect our people. That is why you are in parliament. No, 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 that is why we pay so much no, for you. No, no, no. That is why you would you, you call for rent allowance and we don't say anything. Your, your, your car loans, we don't say anything. Uh, exactly. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm saying that he has a fiduciary duty to the people of Ghana, an obligation to protect us. Now you come and sit on national television and tell all of us that you have been eating it all these years. So you true. knew. It's a fact. You knew. <laughs> no, but I they, think in all I, fairness, I, are they, are they, doctor, I think in all fairness, you're saying we knew. I can probably we can probably go onto the streets and a lot of people will not be aware because a lot of times when we go and we buy food or even we go to the market, that is we it. don't know that this whatever we're buying has come from a genetically modified thing that is i think i can probably put my hand up and say you said we know like it's something that is exactly. labeled in our yeah. markets i think a lot of people it's fair to no, say but, do but not but know you see the thing is that i'm a member of parliament please i'm not a minister of state i'm not in the executive mm -hmm. Oh, oh what you, you see that's why i'm talking about confusion and no, that. But you I'm have to put in a sense i was just making about that thing when you talked about yeah, the no, no. we're eating chickens from, yeah, from brazil exactly. and, stuff. and, and america i don't know and america america has been eating has been eating this for 30 years that's the point they've been eating it i don't think we want to talk people. about no, no. The, the, some of the no, the health things that americans go through they're the biggest obese nation are we gonna are we trying to follow them and europeans are not obese nations they're obese too are we trying to follow them are we trying to follow, no, we're I'm trying saying, to compare Ghana, Ghanaians <laughs> to the Americans, <laughs> and they have better health facilities. Okay. Their hospitals exactly. that don't. Yeah. Okay, let, I don't want to deviate, but we yeah. can't compare no, ourselves. But what I'm saying if is they that eat and they I, go to good hospitals, <laughs> do average Ghanaians <laughs> have why, what they have? But why do you blame me? But you know, is it, you know. No, no, no. You're saying that it's here. <laughs> what do you do about it? Anybody who gets no will know this fact. Can I just ask, what's the next step? What's the next step after we we go back to Parliament on Tuesday? Um, yes. What's what's the next step for you, people like yourself? Oh, Ernesto. So Ernesto, after sorry. after yeah. He sent his well, position already. So um, what I would say is that our leaders, just like has been expressed here have made a lot of progress against us, we the people, <laughs> simply because majority of us do not know. We did not know that the chicken we were eating was genetically modified. We did not know that the shops that we walked into, the groceries that we bought, were genetically modified. A member of parliament is sitting here on national television confirming to all of us that you have been eating poison all these while. But the com wait, but the yeah, common the, but, 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 but there's poison. a common sense line. Americans are eating poison. Wait, Brazilians are eating I, I, poison. I have never interrupted. No. You have been very respectful, oh, please. please. No, 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 but you can't. I have been very uh, respectful, uh, please. Because we're, we're running out of time, please. Now, there's a fallacy inherent 
even in that part particular argument to say that you have been eating it all this while so what so continue eating it if you drank poison yesterday and it didn't kill you does it mean continue drinking the poison so i think that the people who have been commissioned who have been paid to think and protect us should be able to do their work Okay. That didn't answer, I just answer my question. Ask me <laughs> what you're going to be doing after Tuesday. Yeah. Well, after, to, in fact, we are still on it. What we are doing right now is to ensure that the vast majority of our people know what is genetically modified foods is to embrace ma many more people into that subject matter. It looks as though there's a certain attempt to make it look uh, a scientific debate or a scientific, uh, I mean, argument, sort of. Once you eat, you must be able to, to say something about it. You must be able to, to, to decide what you, you, you want to enter into your, your, your system and all that. And the reason for which we would be embarking on how do you call it, more educational campaigns involving the chiefs, bringing on the churches, going to the schools. We, we're already doing that and we hope that uh, as, as it goes. Let me say, I mean, good morning to our Facebook fans because they have been pushing this struggle. You have the newspapers and none of them, a few of them i mean have published items on genetically modified but what is actually pushing this whole debate is what is happening on social media and i want to thank them and urge them to continue with that campaign because that is the only way this is our country and we must live and die for it doc um in regards to yourselves and uh, parliament obviously after tuesday um you know the speaker will give his commentary and all the rest of it are there any plans? no no the speaker won't give his commentary yes let, let me you see let, let me explain a, a bit to you the speaker has referred this matter to the leadership we are still at the consideration stage in fact today at uh, the whole of this week we are still considering clause by clause what should go into it so the petitions as I said, will be sanitized and, you know, everything uh, teased out to put it together to say these are the issues that these petitions are pointing to, which clauses are they relevant to, and then we look at it. So the chances are maybe uh, some of it will be removed. Of course, this is only a draft. What is the sense of consideration? The consideration is to actually go through line by line, sentence by sentence, in relation to petition. You see, even when ministers of state are appointed, we publish this in the newspaper. If we have anything against this man, the government intends to appoint this person as a minister of state. If you have anything against him, please come. And we get petitions. The petitions come, the, 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 the speaker uh, uh, comes out, announces it, that we have so many petitions, refers it to the appointment committee, and we go through it. So what we are doing is... How long do you think the process would take for the, you know, for the Plant Breeders Bill to either be passed in law with, with any additions or subtractions? And, you know, I, suspect, I suspect that this year it should. It depends upon the program, the, the legislative program we have. Okay. If everything being normal, we should see to an act of the, the of this bill, the bill turning into an act this year. An act this year, yes. whether with additions or subtractions. Oh, whatever, based. whatever. Yes. Okay, <laughs> I want to thank you, um, both gentlemen, for coming in to have this. Uh, debate with us. First and foremost, I want to thank Dr. Owusu Friyakoto, who is the, a member of uh, Parliament for Kwadaso, and he's a minority spokesperson on food, agriculture, and cocoa. And also to our guest as well, um, Ernesto, who's a key advocate against GMOs. Okay, well, there you have it. We're going to be talking more right here on New Day.